This is our first video for chapter five of our text. We are going to cover permutations, permutation composition, and cycle notation. I do want to point out that your textbook covers permutations and permutation groups and then goes into composition and cycle notation. So I am going to go a little bit out of order, but by the end of the chapter five videos, I will have covered everything in chapter five. Let's begin with what exactly is a permutation. A permutation of a set A is a function from A to A that is both one to one and onto. So that's fancy talk for saying whatever elements are in the domain will still be in the codomain. One to one and onto says every element of A is going to be mapped to something, to just one something, and every element of the codomain is going to be mapped to from something. So for instance, one way that we have written this before, a mapping might look something like this. So notice this is the set and this is the same set and I'm just going to use these values here and then we're going to talk about what that means. But essentially we're saying one maps to one, two maps to four, three maps to two, and four maps to three. So notice every element is mapped to one other element and everything gets mapped to by something. So when we're talking about a permutation, what's important to understand is that it is a function. The same way that we talk about functions in algebra or in calculus, it's a function that is both one to one and onto. So other math courses, obviously we're going to have something like f of x equals x plus two. And a function is going to be some rule that maps from an infinite set to another set, which might be an infinite set or not. Um, permutations of finite sets, so there are permutations of infinite sets, which we will not study, but permutations of finite sets don't give us a rule. It basically just gives us an explicit listing of each element of the domain and its corresponding value. So this is an example of a permutation. And again, the permutation, the function is called alpha and it is defined as this listing. Alpha of one is equal to one, the same way that I would say f of one, using this function I just made up, would be one plus two or three. So it's the same exact thing, we just don't have to do the math because the listing is given for us. So alpha of one is equal to one, one maps to one, just as we'd had up here. Two maps to four, alpha of three is two, alpha of four is three. Now, listing it in this way, not super helpful because it's just a listing. So mathematicians always like to have a visual way. So this obviously is one visual way, but we're not going to use that way because, well, frankly, it's a little bit elementary. So what we're going to do is write this in array notation. Now, array notation, not my favorite. We're going to talk about cycle notation in a little bit. But array notation does have its ups because it's very clear. What you're going to do is you're going to take all of the elements of the set. Now the set is one, two, three, four. So notice that's all of the elements that were used in the domain and in the codomain. So what you're going to do is write each element in the first row of array notation. Beneath that, you're going to have another row and that row is going to say what each of those elements maps to. So one maps to one. So beneath one, I'm going to write one. Two maps to four, three maps to two, and four maps to three. So this is how I would write alpha in array notation. One maps to one, two to four, three to two, four to three. So let's take a look now at how to compose permutations. Com composition is the function operation that we will use, um, especially in the next video when we talk about permutation groups, that will be the implied operation. So if I want to compute a, b, think about this just as we did before when we had f of, of g of x, which you might see written like this, or f of g of x, just as before we would start on the right and go to the left, and that's what we're going to do here. 
So alpha, beta, you can rewrite them if you'd like. But you certainly don't have to. Alpha, beta says, yes, write them in the correct order, but start on the right and work your way to the left to see what happens. So what's going to happen? When I write my solution, I'm going to write one, two, three, four as always. So always keep that top row in the correct numerical order. But starting on the right, one maps to four. But I'm not going to write four here because that's just what beta does to one. Now I have to take alpha of four. So what happens to four in alpha? It maps to three. Two, two is going to map to two in beta and in alpha, that result of two maps to four. Starting now at three. So three maps to one in beta, but alpha takes one and maps it to one. And then four, beta maps to three, alpha maps three to two. So that's my solution. Now going in the other order, again, same idea. Feel free to rewrite it or not rewrite it. So I'm not going to rewrite it. Um, this says do alpha first, then do beta. So let's start with one. Using the correct order, starting at alpha, one maps to one. What does beta do to the result of one? It maps it to four. Now let's start at two. Alpha maps two to four, but beta takes four, which is the outcome, and maps it to three. 3 in alpha gets mapped to 2, but 2 gets mapped to 2 in beta. And then 4 maps to 3 in alpha, 3 maps to 1 in beta. Now for a, an inverse, all we're going to do is say what mapped to that value. So again, I'm looking at alpha, so I'm looking here. In alpha, which value mapped to 1? So I'm looking at this row. Well, one mapped to one. What mapped to two? Well, three mapped to two. What mapped to three? Four mapped to three. What mapped to four? Two mapped to four. Now, I'm not going to do it, but what you can do is if you take alpha, alpha, inverse, or if you take alpha, inverse, alpha, and you multiply those, either result should give you the identity which would be one maps to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. So I will leave that work for you to do. I wanna take a look now at cycle notation. I do wanna point out that your textbook doesn't cover cycle notation yet. It covers permutation groups and then cycle notation. I'm going to go ahead and cover cycle notation now because it pairs so well with array notation that we just learned about. So I'm, if you'll notice, I have the same two uh, permutations of alpha and beta. And we're going to take a look at cycle notation, which is a way to write permutations that uh, don't have two rows. They're just going to have one row. So here's how it works. When we write something in cycle notation, we're going to start with the number one. So we're always going to start at like that first number, whatever the first number is, in this case one. We're going to then say, what does one map to? And in this case, for alpha, one maps to one. And when we get in a permutation in cycle notation, if we get back to whatever the first value is in the permutation, we close the permutation. So notice one maps to itself. And so that's kind of its own little cycle. It's a one cycle. One maps to one and it doesn't go anywhere else. Now, if I look at beta, however, one maps to four. So now I have to keep going because one maps to four and four maps to three. And now I have to keep going because three maps to one. Now keep in mind, we just got back to where we started, so that's when I close it. So am I done? No, of course not, because for alpha, I've only taken a look at one. Now I'm going to go to the next number that's unassigned, so that's two, and two maps to four, and four maps to three, and three maps back to two, which is that first number, so I close it. And for beta, the only one I haven't used is two maps to two. Now, this one, where one maps to one, and this one, where two maps to two, those are called identity 
cycles because they're mapping to themselves. So when we write our final solution, we typically don't write the one cycles. We write two, four, three, one, four, three. Okay, so now that we have simplified each of these into cycle notation, let's take a look at the same questions that we answered previously, computing alpha beta, beta alpha, and alpha inverse. So I'm going to go ahead and write alpha, beta, and beta, alpha, and then we're going to find these products together, and then we'll get to the inverse. So when I'm computing alpha beta, just like I did before, I'm starting on that right hand side. So I'm going to start with one. So don't feel like you have to start with three because that's the last number or two because that's the first number. When we're doing this, we're always going to start at one. So one, I'm starting here. What happens to one here? One maps to four. Don't write down four because now I have to move over here and say what happens to four here? Four maps to three. So I'm going to write down three. And then I'm going to do the same thing with three. So three, starting here, three maps to one. And over here, we don't have a one. Remember, because that is because one mapped to itself. So three maps to one. And now I'm closing that uh, because we map back to the first value. Now we have the two. And two doesn't map anywhere because that mapped to itself, but two maps to four. And then four maps to three and three maps back to two. So we have two, two cycles for this cycle notation. Now let's look at in reverse, beta alpha. So again, I'm going to start with one. Oops, didn't mean to do that. One maps to itself here, but maps to four here. Now let's start with four. Four maps to three, three maps back to one. I have to close it. Now let's take a look at two because two has not been assigned and that's the lowest value that's not been assigned. So two maps to four, four maps to three, and then three maps to two, two maps back to itself. So I close it. So I have two, two cycles as well. And if you will, um, when we're done here, look back at the solutions that we found in array notation before. Remember we had one, two, three, four, you'll see that for alpha beta, one map to three and three map to one and two map to four and four map to two. And same thing for beta alpha, our result when we dealt in array notation was one to four, four to one, two to three, three to two. So these are equivalent. Lastly, let's look at alpha inverse. So alpha inverse is a little bit trickier because again, you have to kind of think in reverse. So we know that one mapped to one because it's we didn't even write it in the cycle notation. But just like we did before, we're saying what maps to two? Well, three maps to two. And what maps to three? Well, four maps to three. And what maps to four? Well, two maps to four. So then we close it. So again, we would just write that as two, three, four. So these are our solutions. And again, you should be able to find that they um, are equivalent to the solutions that we found in array notation. Here's one last practice for you to try on your own. Uh, so press pause, then when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So I'm going to get started right away because I'm trying to keep this video around 20 minutes. So for alpha, alpha, one maps to one, and then close the parentheses. And then two, two maps to three, three to five, five to four, four maps back to two, so I close the parentheses. And for beta, one maps to two, two to four, four back to one, three to five, five back to three, six to itself. So for each of these, I'm only going to be concerned about any of the values that are not one cycles because one cycles are unimportant to us because they don't do anything. So here's my two final results. Now, if I'm going to compute alpha beta, again, feel free to recopy two, three, five, four, one, two, four, three, five. 
Again, we're just going to be concerned about what happens to the one element that we care about, and we're going to start on the right and move to the left. So starting with one, one stays the same, one to two, two to three. Three to five, nothing, five to four. Nothing, four to one, nothing. So four goes back to one. Then I start with two. Nothing, two to four, four to two. Then I start with five. Five to three, nothing, three to five. And six actually just maps back to itself. So really the only thing I care about here is the one, three, four. For beta alpha, again, one, two, four, three, five, two, three, five, four. Start with one, nothing, nothing, one to two. Two to three, three to five, nothing. Five to four, nothing, four to one. Close the parenthesis. Start with three, three to five, five to three, nothing. Start with four, four to two, nothing, two to four, close it. And we have everything because again, six would just map to six. So my result, one, two, five. And finally, if I'm computing A inverse, A is two, three, five, four. So again, I'm asking the inverse of that is what mapped to two? Well, four mapped to two. What mapped to four? Five, what mapped to five? three, what map to three, two, so close the parenthesis. Up next, we're going to take a look at permutation groups, which is really just combining what we now know about permutations with what we know about group theory, which is what set we're using, and of course, what operation, which will be composition of functions.